Hello, everyone. In this presentation, I'd like to share some tidbits of internship, uh, specifically industry internship with you. Um, these years of having worked in computer industry for two decades. And then uh, for the last six years, I've been here at Texas A&M University, and I've had a number of my students go um, secure internships at uh, different software companies. And um, I'd like to relate some of their own experiences uh, through this presentation with you. So um, this presentation does not talk about the technical aspects of, uh, of getting an interview, which relates to mostly uh, coding interview. Um, I have separate material on the subject. And so if you're interested, you can certainly uh, reach out to me and I'll be happy to share it with you. What this presentation does talk about is the following first. How do you go about getting your resume in the hands of the right people? That's, that's where it starts. It's very important. Um, how do you handle interviews? Uh, there's some general aspects of interviews, and then there's also some uh, areas of uh, behavioral testing that industry likes to uh, poke on. And so I'd like to share some tidbits there with you. Um, how do you decide amongst competing offers? What to do before heading out for internship? Uh, how do you make the best out of the gig? So when, you, when you're there, um, what are the best practices of making the best impression? And then things to note as you wrap up and, and return back to campus. So uh, let's say you don't have an internship. How do you go about getting one? So first thing first, build a resume. Uh, Career Cup, and I've included a link here, has good advice. Um, our Career Center uh, also can help. Um, or you can ask a professor or advisor. Um, but I believe that the best source of help really is to reach out to some of the, our juniors and seniors who've already interned at a company. Uh, they often have the best advice um, on how best to present yourself. And they can tell you both in terms of what worked for them and what didn't, so that's important. Now, once you have a resume, uh, these are some of the methods how you can go about getting an internship. And so I'm grading them in, in increasing order of effectiveness, meaning the one that I show you first has the least likelihood of success. So, uh, so you know, you can post resume. Now I'm not saying you don't do it. So go ahead and post, but the likelihood of success uh, just through a generic posting on company website or indeed.com is the least likely uh, in, in all these different uh, um, options that I'm showing you here. The next higher likelihood of success is through a direct contact with the company Human Resources at Career Fair. So we live uh, this year, a lot of uh, contacts are happening virtually. Uh, so you come in contact with an engineering manager or with a company HR uh, and the HR Human Resources takes your resume um, then, of course, the way it works out behind the scenes is that they go and deposit your resume in a database along with some editorial comments that they may have learned about you while talking to you. And then they are going to filter it out by running some queries and then send, if you're lucky, um, then your resume is going to be forwarded to a hiring manager. So there's multiple chains of uh, of uh, um, um, determination or assessment that actually happened before your resume gets in the hand of someone who's actually uh, in the capacity of being a decision maker about whether or not to give you a technical interview. So, um, so it's, it, it's good. Uh, again, like I said, you, it's not that I'm discouraging you from doing that, but the likelihood of success through an HR is probably not as strong as it is if you get direct referral to a hiring manager from someone who is interned at a company or an employee of the company or you know one of your professors who may have one of their students working at the company. Um, so, so pretty good success there because, uh, because it, the, your resume gets directly in the hands of someone who's hiring. And finally, um, the best thing is if you can get hold directly with a hiring manager. So whether it's on phone or in person or at career fair, uh, those have the highest uh, chance of success. Now success, I'm not saying means always 
in uh, success is not is not getting an offer that comes later but here what we're talking about success is is the chance of actually um getting to interview uh getting to interview in a technical capacity and so so a direct contact with a hiring manager here they'll tell you whether they are ready to talk to you um or or whether they just don't have a job with you but that's that's always the best now um uh, once you are invited for an internship interview um there are some tips here on how to best handle so many intern offers are made on career center visit or over the phone um on rare occasions you may be asked to go for an on-site interview um again i said it's it's somewhat rare um uh and especially in this year uh, where a lot is being done virtually um you know a lot of contact is actually happening on on platforms like zoom or webex or, or skype now regardless uh, here are some suggestions on how you can ace your interview so first of all no and i mean really no everything on your resume down to the semicolon so i say that somewhat uh, tongue in cheek here but but it's really important that when you put something as an expertise for example i'm expert in these languages or i know this language very well or an experience uh, in a job uh, with another company for example uh, or a coursework that you took or a project that you did uh in a course uh, you got to really be able to talk about it uh, with authority and and this in my personal experience having hired hundreds of people during my industry career uh, if someone could not explain what they did uh, what they wrote on their resume uh, that just was a deal breaker for me because uh, uh, because th that is like how you showcase your, your yourself right so it's very important and if you're not convinced on why you wrote something just remove it um, that's the best advice i can give you now employers are looking for the following in an intern beyond basic qualification so first thing is a, a resilient go getter who loves working in a team uh, most employers and i'm talking now about not as a company but more as hiring managers people who are going to supervise interns uh they love i mean they're not expecting you to know everything they are looking for some basic qualifications but above all of that they're looking for someone who can really take an idea and run with it and run with it doesn't mean that you don't work with people i mean of course these days we pretty much everything gets done in a team but here i mean independence meaning someone who understands how they can extend an idea um to build on or uh, in cases where they don't understand something what sort of right questions to ask so that's the first thing is go getter now i also add an adjective resilient and this is because as you've seen in your own experience either work experience or going through coursework you know these things are not easy right i mean every now and then you come across uh, failures uh, where sometimes it may even seem like end of the road and it's our resilience it's our faith in ourselves um and our willingness to not give up uh, these are the the traits that people look for because they expect that when you go there you will find problems and uh, you're not going to shy away from from tackling those so that's i always love people who showed this sort of trait and sometimes this was more important than if they knew a certain formula or if they could solve a problem well that brings me to the second point is a problem solver so you know let me say a little more about this so a problem solver is not someone who solved a problem but but what we are also looking for is someone who demonstrates an approach which shows their thinking and their problem solving skills that's important you know it's not super critical that you came with the right answer but your approach and your thought process sometimes is more important than the fact that you got the right answer 
So, so that's something that also people look for um, beyond basic qualifications. And then the third one is someone who's a low maintenance, you know, um, I mean, if, 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 let's say that you were to hire an intern and then an intern came to you always just complaining or getting into arguments with people unnecessarily, uh, not being constructive, those are all, those are all negative traits. And so we're looking for people who just put their heads down, work with team and getting things done. So, so be sure to look at some of these things carefully and assess your own personality and see if you have any of the disqualifying uh, attributes. Um, most of all, I'm just looking to recommend that these are things that sometimes get overlooked as we are eager to showcase ourselves in the best light. And sometimes we don't accentuate the best of our attributes uh, when no one is watching, right? So, so please be sure to make sure to, to ensure that, that these qualities uh, show through very clearly uh, in your interview. Now, here's how you can talk yourself uh, out of a potential job opportunity. So first thing is, in, in a way, I mean, these are kind of anti the three points that I mentioned just now about basic, beyond basic qualifications. Here, first thing is, well, you know, if someone gives up at the first sight of not knowing an answer. Uh, that's pretty bad, right? Um, so if, if you find yourself in a corner where you just don't know where to go, um, ask your interviewer for hints, um, or at least let them know that you're willing to work through some of the first principles. People appreciate that you're trying. Now, trying doesn't mean you're just throwing darts in the air, right? Because that can be pretty annoying to someone who is has limited time and probably wants to ask you more questions. So if you really get to a point where you're just starting to throw darts in the, on the board, then just stop and ask the, ask the interviewer if it's okay, um, just being respectful of their time, ask if it's okay if they can see you trying different ideas. Now, if they, are, if they want to see you, your approach, even if it's not the right approach, then they'll let you know that yes, go ahead. Uh, if on the other hand, they are short on time and they want to just move on and ask you a different question, then that's okay as well. Are you just being respectful? But the point is that you are letting them know that you don't want to just move on to something or throw your hands up in the air. What you wanna do is you want to let them know that you're willing to try and ask them respectfully if they're okay watching you try, even if it does not lead to the right, uh, uh, on the right path. The other one, which is a disqualifying characteristic is just by becoming defensive, you know? Um, so sometimes, and this is something interesting, it's like a tactic that people use. It, interviews are looking for flaws. So what they do is they pick and prod on purpose. Uh, you know, they'll just pick on you or they might just try to force you down a wrong path just to see how you'll react. So my advice here is don't take the bait. You know, um, in other words, just try your best not to be, be defensive. It's at the end of the day, it's just an interview to find a match, right? It's not a battle of wits. So keep it cordial. And um, at some point, if someone is getting on your nerves, just kind of take a deep breath and, and just convince yourself that, hey, um, um, I'm being tested for being a professional. And so the best thing for me to be a professional is, is not necessarily to cede my ground easily, but to be respectful and also not to show my irritation. So, so that's important. You know, these are subtle things to keep in mind. Uh, and again, this is all in the spirit of showcasing yourself to be one of the guys, uh, gals that they'd love to, to uh, hire and, and work with. Let's talk about a few behavioral things uh, in uh, internship, internship interviews. So one of the questions that comes up is, tell me about yourself. I mean, it's a very harmless question. And so one pitfall here is people start pretty much going through their resume. And so 
So this is something you should try to avoid because look, if someone is coming to interview you, it's likely uh, that they have read your resume. So they've already, they already know uh, about what you've done, what you're good at and so on and so forth, right? So just start by saying, well, you've already seen my resume. So let me say something that I couldn't write on my resume, right? And so something that you might want to point out is example of, of maybe when last time you had a massive failure of some kind and what lessons you drew from it and how you prepared to handle situations like that better or in cases where it was avoidable, how you would avoid something like that, right? That showcases a real life lesson learned. Or cite an example for uh, for when, uh, cite an example for when you led something, uh, a project, and maybe you had some disagreements with people and uh, and you were able to get them out of it, right? And, you know, towards the path of, of team success. Uh, there may be some, you know, every one of us has a story, uh, something that is interesting that showcases our strengths, uh, or showcases us to the person we are today from our life experiences. So feel free to sh uh, share that uh, because that's something, you know, it's typical our resumes are limited to one page. So it's possible something you wanted to say or explain just could not do that. So here would be a perfect opportunity to talk about yourself that is beyond what is listed on your resume. Another question that could come up is, tell me about a project you're proud of. Now, don't just talk about the project, but it also about the learnings that you drew from the project. I mean, you know, when people say, tell me about a project that you're proud of. So what they wanna know is, what are you proud of uh, from your association with that project, right? Because more likely than not, you have listed that project already. What you have not listed is, what made it stand out? Or what sort of challenges did you overcome um, while you were working on the project, right? What lessons did you draw from it? So those are things that people are looking to understand beyond just understanding what the project was, right? Did you have any experience with teamwork? Did you ever have conflict with your partners or how did you resolve the conflict? So if you didn't have something like this in college, then think back to your high school days. Uh, people just want to know at the end of the day how good a teammate you are, right? And so try to focus on positives about your role in conflict resolution and motivation. Uh, clearly, if you, were, if you were the problem <laughs> in, in teamwork, try not to say that because uh, that wouldn't be good. However, <laughs> well, you know, I say that because because I also want to mention that if you were the problem, I think it's okay to say that, yes, I was the problem in the project, but I learned my lesson and it's this experience made me better for the person I am today. So again, people are looking for your learnings. It's important for these things to be very genuine and heartfelt. And so don't be afraid to share emotions. That's the other thing. Uh, you know, when you share some of these things, it's okay. I mean, there's, at the, on the other end, you know, these days, most of the interviews are done over video. So on the other end, you actually see like a real human being. And even though it's pixelated, it's still a human being on the other side and not an AI bot. So, so be sure to talk to people like they are human beings. And with that, it's okay to feel somewhat vulnerable to express yourself um, and that just opens up new channels. Why should we hire you? Um, companies are looking for dependable, creative, resilient, productive, quality-oriented, disciplined team players, right? So think of all of these things. These are great qualities, right? And just check mark the ones you have and talk about those. So, you know, sometimes just kind of thinking through these things really helps because then you're prepared. Right? You're not trying to search for an answer and then realizing later, oh, I wish I could have said that, right? I mean, so it, 
think about these things up front and be sure to give examples. You know, just don't just say I'm dependable. Show why. Give an example. Tell a story why you're dependable. The other question is what can you bring to our company? And so here, um, go beyond cliches. I think that's the important thing. You can talk about your technical skills, non-technical skills, something that makes you stand out. And here, I think it's important to reflect what the company does, right? So um, if you understand the company business, and if you understand the specific group for which you are interviewing, then I think you can tailor some of your strengths to, to showcase how they apply to that company or the group. Uh, what do you know about our company? That's the other thing people ask, right? I mean, now folks like Microsoft, Google, Google Amazon, I mean, people know them already, but then there are some companies that aren't as big, but still are somewhat known, have a web presence. And so, so I think it's a good idea to just look at what they do and don't just know what they do, but related to how they, um, how they match with your interests. So you can say, I like, I know you guys do this. And by the way, I've taken a course in this, or I've had an internship that actually prepared me for this. And so sharing some of those things are important. What are your career, um, what's your career goal for the future? So try not to talk about lofty goals, like I want to run a company um, one day, or I want to be, you know, the CEO um, and so on, right? I mean, I think, I think most people do carry an ambition to progress well in their career. So it's somewhat understood that you want to grow um, to very bigger roles. But I, I think what you, what's worthwhile talking about is first is the kind of experiences you want to have in life to pre that prepare you for doing something amazing. I think that's, that's great, right? So for example, a career goal can be, I'd love to be able to um, use AI for this, right? I mean, you know, state whatever area you want to make an impact in. And then go on to say a little bit more about why that is your goal. Um, or I'd love to run a company eventually that does this for the society, right? And so I think it's somewhat coupled. Now, the other thing I want to say is, is uh, as much as possible, also try to focus on near-term goals because when you, in, when you are talking to someone for internship, to me, it makes practical sense that, that you showcase the reason you are taking that internship or you're applying for that internship is because it fulfills your goals. Uh, and the goal could be, I'd love to get into a company in this type of job. And therefore I'm looking for this particular area for internships so I can work in this company or do this type of job. I think that's a good goal to show, right? Or that I'd like to intern here so I can get a job so I can build skills and become an expert in these areas. I mean, those are, those I think are important things to point out. All right, so now um, let's say that you have multiple offers and I just wanna showcase an exercise that has helped me personally in life um, make sound decisions, you know, in life. Because when you are on to making a decision, um, clearly that decision is based on the following things, right? First is you have some expectations for the criteria that you'll apply, right? Um, and you know, so, something like this where you say, um, well, you know, these are the things that are important to me in making, in considering or making this decision, right? 
So that's one thing. Once you list all of those things that are important to you, it's important then to understand what is their relative significance, right? You know, something might be, so you have like five or six things that will help you make a decision that are important, but they have their relative order of importance. So that's important to know, right? And then this next thing is when you have multiple offers or multiple choices, then you want to grade each choice on all of those vectors. Okay. So let's look at a, an example. So here is something when you have multiple offers, you can think of criteria and these are common things I've listed. You know, there might be 10 more things that you can think of, but here, you know, I've listed six things, location, compensation, learning opportunity, opportunity for growth, work culture, and brand name, right? So these are common things that would come to your mind when you are considering more between multiple offers. Now, what I suggest is, is once you list this criteria, um, assign a weight to them. So in this case, you can see here that in this example, learning opportunity has the highest weight. And then opportunity for growth is second and then you know so on and so forth right so you assign a weight now once you have listed the number of items try your best to actually assign the weights first in a very dispassionate way right in a very objective way uh, and a very truthful way something that you really you don't have to show this to anybody else just have to convince yourself that what you're putting down as important to you and the relative order of importance is exactly what is put on paper. Now, all of these things, you just add up to one. Okay, and so now you get on uh, starting to grade the multiple offers. So here is an example I've shown for the offer one. Well, you know, for uh, geolocation, it, ran, it rated really well. So you gave it like 80 on 100. So it was great. Um, and it it was worst. Uh, of course, you know, again, we are just talking about um, the score between zero and 100. So work culture was not that hot, right, over there. So, so that's, and then the brand name was awesome. So, so those are the kind of things. So now you multiply these, the two things uh, together. And so, um, so you multiply each, each of these pairs and that gives you the actual score for the offer, right? So for example, this first row is gonna result in a score of 12. The next one is gonna result in four and, and so on. And then you just add them up and you do this exercise for all the offers. And now, you know, you think that the one with the highest would be the obvious choice. Well, I got some news for you here. So it may or may not be the case. Actually, what I'm recommending is, is just toss this whole score business away, right? Um, I mean, I mean that somewhat with a little bit sense of humor. What I'm trying to say here is that just going through a thought process is what is more important. You know, it's not so critical on who scored the highest at the end. It's the exercise that forced you to list what was important to you. And it forced you to list the relative order of importance of the criteria. Um, and then it forced you to acknowledge the goodness of each offer along each one of those vectors. So it's the exercise that matters more uh, than the final score, okay? Um, now, I mean, you know, if there's a big enough difference and if you've carried this exercise with complete objectivity, then my hope is that the score would be uh, reflective of, uh, of what your top choice ought to be, okay? So what's considered kosher in terms of reaching out to the company to make a decision? Now, why do we talk about this? It's because just going back here, you see that we listed all these different criterias, criteria. So, how do you actually, um, so first of all, the weight is a pretty easy thing because that's something completely depends on you, right? 
um, you know, you, you're, you're the one who knows best on what is the relative order of importance. This column right here, the grading of the offer, uh, you really need help um, to be able to grade properly. So you're seeking answers to some of these questions, the criteria standpoint. And so, so that's why uh, we want to uh, kind of list some of these things here on how do you go about getting answers, right? So first thing is geolocation. And now, uh, well, I mean, this year is a pretty bad year because we ended up uh, having virtual internships, right? People just were stuck at home remote working remotely. Now there are some companies that are actually thinking about making it pretty much like a plan of record to work um, remotely. But there are companies and I'm hoping at least, you know, 2021 uh, summer and onwards that we should be able to go back to work. I mean, that's, that's my hope. So if you end up getting an internship where you actually get to go and work on a company site, then the geographical thing is all on the web these days. It's fairly easily available, right? So, so I would say, don't even bother asking about the geography, like, hey, what's the temperature like in summer? I mean, you, you know, you can find that out. So what is not okay to ask is the positives and negatives of the location. I mean, people would kind of get peeved off, right? Uh, if, um, if you're saying, hey, tell me what's bad about Seattle. Well, everybody knows it rains all the time. Um, so you don't need to kind of rub it in people's faces, right? That said, summers are wonderful. Um, compensation. Uh, intern offers are fairly standard. Um, that's what I'm here to tell you. Um, you know, companies rare, don't negotiate much. Now, if you do want to ask about compensation, like, you know, hey, I'm deciding between multiple offers, uh, I'd like to negotiate. Now, if you want to start that thread, do that only if you think it is going to be the difference maker in your decision, okay? Um, um, because they'll call you on it. They'll call you bluff, right? If, if it is a bluff. So, uh, so, so be sure when you ask for a change, um, ask only if it is truly a difference maker. Um, now, uh, some companies offer like a relocation bonus for internship. Um, they might pay some, you know, real cash out but that's okay. Uh, but on base offers and all, I, I seriously doubt they have pretty standard offers. Now, if they really want you bad and if you are willing to walk away, if they say no, then yes, go ahead and ask. Um, what about learning opportunity? So internship learning opportunities vary widely from mundane to groundbreaking. It depends on the company. If you join large companies, they more likely than not will have you do some really basic stuff, right? Like build models, <laughs> be the human um, continuous integration task owner. I mean, you know, that's kind of mundane, right? Although there are some good experiences there, but still, if you work in a small company, sometimes the small companies, they don't really have many hands. So, and in turn could end up actually contributing to production software. So, so it varies depending on the company. Now, when you ask people about the learning opportunities, um, ask in a manner which shows an understanding that you're not asking for a commitment from them. So why do I say that? And the reason is that Many of the times internships get decided about six months to sometimes even a year before uh, before you go there. A lot can change. You know, um, it turns out at the end of the day, you're there to help, but not necessarily be the saviors, right? And so from that point of view, be open to the thought that what you're told actually may have changed by the time you get there. So, you know, they had some plans of having you work in some place. And then when you got there, hey, plans changed and now you're working on something else. 
So when you ask this question about, can you tell me what I'll be doing? Ask in a way that doesn't put them in a corner that they've got to give you either a commit or just not answer at all, right? So a lot of times people say, hey, you know what? We don't really know. We'll really know by the time you get here, we'll know. So this is a standard answer. And if this thing was important to you to know what you're working on, then you would not ask the question in the way that, tell me what I'll be working on. What you will do is you probably say something like this. You know, I understand that when you guys hire in turn, you know, it's for typical jobs. And I realize that things change from sometimes month to month. So I realize that I might be doing something different from what you have in mind today, but can you tell me what people with my skills and my background end up doing in internship? Now you see when you ask like that, it actually gives some avenue for the manager um, to, to kind of feel free to let you know. And so you kind of get the answer without putting someone in a box. The growth opportunity, and this is something that you only get to monitor when you're on the job. So here I would advise you ask some of the current and past um, Aggies who work there about the growth opportunities. Look, I mean, if you go and work in a company for three months as an intern, you'll meet plenty of people and uh, you'll see enough things that will give you an idea of what a career in that company is like, right? So, so with that assumption, I think it's okay for you to reach out to people who worked in that company as an intern or people who may be working there full time uh, and just ask. And those are the right people to ask. Uh, your hiring manager may not be the best person for that. Uh, work culture. And so here, I think you can ask your hiring manager. Um, so the kind of things that you can look for in a work culture are what is, how disciplined are people who are working in that company? Um, what is the approach to risk taking? How enterprising they are? Uh, what sort of work people do in teams? So those are good things to know, uh, you know, about work culture. So it's okay to ask your hiring manager. Um, and I think hiring managers would be comfortable telling you about the work culture. In fact, most of them would probably want to brag about things that are going well in their company. So here's something interesting. Um, let's say you said yes to company X, and then two weeks later, your dream company Y calls you for an interview. I mean, this is, it, it can happen, right? I mean, you know, it's not like you're applying to only one company. Um, you may be applying to multiple companies and not all of them will give you an offer and on the same day and not all of them would be comfortable letting you decide, you know, give you like six months to decide. Right. So, so anyway, this scenario is pretty real. Um, you already came to a point where you said to company X, I'm happy with your offer. I'll show up. I'll be your intern. And then a couple of weeks later, a company that you'd always wanted to work in calls you. What is the easiest thing to do here? So I'll tell you this, depending on your, you know, conscience or moral compass, right? Or your values. And I'm not here sitting in judgment at all. I'm simply just saying, you know, we all view life differently from each other, right? So there are two things which are easiest to do here. One is to just say, I've already said yes to a company and I'm sorry. Um, I love you guys. I've always thought about you, but sorry, I've already said yes to company X. And so maybe next time. That's an easy thing, thing to do, right? Easy in the sense that it's a clear cut, right? I'm sure that you'd be feeling sad inside, but, but it's, a, it's a clear cut thing to say. The other clear cut thing to also do is to not tell anything to X and to just say company Y, great, 
I'm all yours. I'm coming. Tell me when you want to interview me. Uh, I'm all available. So in other words, not be not be open um, and forthright. That's also the easy thing to do, right? So, so you've got to ask yourself which side you feel comfortable. I mean, I'm definitely hopeful that that when you think about legacy and when you think about, so when I say legacy, I mean, you know, what sort of impression would you want people to have of Aggies if they were to find out that you already had said yes to another company, right? Um, or when you go back, let's say Y offers you a job and then you go back and tell X, I'm sorry, I did say yes to you, but I went ahead and I accepted another offer, right? So think about what legacy you're going to set for the Aggie brand, right? I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's not going to be positive. The other thing is also to reflect on is when you when you have accepted an offer with X and now you tell Y that you are open to interviewing them, right? There is a possibility that Y may actually disappoint you, right? It's possible. Um, in which case, you may actually end up saying no to them, right? And then if that's the case, you realize that you have taken up unnecessary time from people who otherwise have extremely busy lives. You know, for most people, and I relate from my own personal experience, you know, hiring was always not the daytime job. I mean, you know, when I say not the daytime job, I mean, it's not the primary responsibility. These are all volunteer responsibilities. So we want to be very respectful. So what I'm really maybe kind of coming around to saying that that the easiest thing in terms of telling why that, hey, I've already accepted an offer with X and so I'm sorry, I cannot talk to you guys. That's, a, that's the easiest and also the right thing to do if you are in a position to do that. I would strongly discourage you from hiding stuff from X and then going behind the back and interviewing with Y. That's just not the right thing to do, okay? Now, what is the right thing to do here? And this is where, aside from everything that I've said above, there is some opening that I want to give you. If your heart was really set on why, then I believe that you can still convince yourself that on the other end of the line, you know, there are human beings who represent company X and company Y, right? So if you really wanted to talk to Y, if I were you, I would actually go and talk to both of these guys up front. So to the folks on company Y, I would, I would tell them that, look, so actually let's, let's first talk about company X. So to company X, I would say, you know, guys, I have accepted your offer. There's no if and or buts about it. But for, you know, you can say all my life or for the last many years or that I've always wanted to see, I've always been interested in why they only recently contacted me. And I would just feel horrible if I were not to find out what they're about. I wouldn't want to come. And so this is you talking to company X, right? You would say, I wouldn't want to just come and work for you um, while feeling bad about not having talked to Y. Or you can say the other way, saying, I would want to bring 100% of me to you. And so the best way for me to do that is to actually test out what Y is like. So at the end of the day, when I join you, I know for a fact that that I have, um, I did look at my chances, right? So I think this is just what I'm trying to say, maybe not in the best of the words. And I think, you know, um, based on your own way of communication, 
uh, how you, best to say it. But what I'm trying to suggest here is that if your heart tells you that you should talk to Y, I believe that that you can actually have a real human to human conversation with the person at company X and let them know, let them understand, uh, you know, where your heart is. And so, uh, so that way, at least, you know, that if they say, okay, well, you know what, we love ourselves. Again, this is company X telling you. So they'll say, you know what, we got confidence that we are better than everyone else. And so, you know what, if your heart tells you, you got to talk to these other people as well, go ahead and talk. And, and we are convinced that ultimately you'll come and join us. So that sort of conversation would actually allow people to build more respect for you. And even more important than that is you would have a clear conscience about yourself as a respectable human being at the end of the day, right? So now coming to company Y, what you need to tell them up front is that I have accepted an offer with X and that I have spoken to them and they have acknowledged that and they have told me that I can talk to you. So please know that when I'm talking to you, it is because I truly want to know about you. I'm interested in you, but you should know that I have an offer. Um, and that I've accepted it and that everything is out in the open. And I think, again, you know, these conversations, uh, these are difficult ones to have. But I say that not because I'm simply aspiring to that standard, but it's because I personally lived with that standard and I've seen people who actually um, behaved in a very honorable way with me when I was a hiring manager. And I know for a fact that all fair-minded people are actually willing to listen and willing to give people a chance. So there you go. You know, I've completely made this thing clear as much for you, uh, but I thought it would be very important for me to not only point extreme ends, but also bring you the shades um, of gray in between, okay? Um, so let's say you have an internship, now what? So here, I just wanna briefly talk about the before, during, and after. So before the internship, let's first baseline on why we're going for an, in an internship in the first place. Well, it's to get some real world experience in our field, that's important. Um, to get in the queue, to impress the company for a repeat invite, to get to be invited back for an internship, eventually a full-time job. To find out if the field is for us or is it time to aim for something different? You know, um, sometimes like, you know, if you are aiming for a job in computer science and let's say you have a degree in applied math or statistics, right? So, um, you have an internship and let's say that you decide, okay, well, you know, I like this company. I'm willing to give them a chance and I'll go, maybe they have a job for me uh, on um, uh, front end development, for example. Um, and that's okay. Um, and I'm just going to go find out if that's good for me or should I, do I really care about my um, specialization in applied math or statistics? to actually look for something really deeper in the area of machine learning, for example, right? Because that's where it takes a lot of leverage from, from knowing, uh, having good background in statistics, uh, for example. So, so sometimes people want to know if the field is really for them or is it time to aim for something different? To get any real world experience, even if it's not in our field, sometimes that is good enough a bar for people, right? Is, hey, working with professionals is better than just sitting at home and maybe just taking courses or not doing anything, right? So um, for some, it's just about making money and that's okay. I mean, look, it's internships are, most of them are paid internships. So 
Sometimes the goal for an internship can be as simple as saying, look, I'm just going to go do anything. I'll get some experience, but my primary goal is to just make some money so I can pay my tuition when I come back. Right? So you got a baseline yourself, like why you are going for an internship in the first place. Now, if you checked on all of the above, it's just wonderful. <laughs> if you did not check any, then I'm actually worried about you. So you, you got to really be uh, introspective about this, right? Just be clear on why you want to do an internship. Um, before getting there, finding a place to live, food, transportation, again, you know, if it's a virtual internship, well, don't have anything to worry about there. Um, but if you're going someplace, something definitely to worry about, like where are you going to live? Uh, what would you do to eat, right? Um, and how would you get back and forth? So those are important things. Two things work best. One is a company typically has a network of interns and they tend to kind of give you like the same spiel or same set of options. And so they even put together portals for interns before you get there. So that's like big, big companies tend to do that a lot. Um, you can sometimes, you know, if you don't have that kind of luxury with a company, you can talk to the HR. And if all else fails, just call your or email your would be manager and just find out some basic answers. It's important to know than not know. So you gotta find some, some way of getting the answers. Uh, preparing for a job, uh, don't be shy to ask what they expect you to do. Again, be clear that, hey, you understand things can change, but you just wanna know people with your skills and background, what kind of things do they end up doing? Because once they share with you, at least you can give yourself some chance of trying to uh, get prepared for it. Um, be open to, and I mean embrace, the mindset that you may be asked to do sometimes the most mundane of jobs. And that's okay because the value of non-tangible learning that you get in a professional environment are often understated. So it's not just the technical stuff you do, but it's also watching people interact with each other in a professional setting or, or, or watching people make mistakes or hearing about what the company is doing. All of these things are great things that even if you were to be doing the most mundane of jobs, you'd still be privy to all of these other experiences that you would not get otherwise, okay? Once you start the internship, just realize time is short, so you need to be very crisp on your objectives and your understanding of the employer's expectations. So. There's typically three phases of an internship, a quick ramp up, um, the big chunk of time when you're performing and then ramp down, right? So phase A and C must be very short. Try to keep them to under a week. You know, people, they, they wouldn't appreciate you taking like multiple weeks to get set for picking up something to do, right? And in fact, people are making impressions about how quick someone is in being able to pick up skills to perform. And so you want to make a great first impression. Um, and by the way, you know, if the quicker you ramp, the more time you leave for yourself and your manager to actually give you more meaty assignments, right? And so, you know, if typical internships are three months, if you were to, so that's, you know, talking about 12 weeks, if you're going to take couple of weeks and ramp up and ramp down, that opens up 10 weeks, which is a pretty significant amount of time for you to perform uh, in the meat of the, of the task. The ramp down is really just, they might make you write a report or do an exit interview or presentation, uh, which is actually good. So if they don't ask you for something like that, ask them if you can do that. Just a way to gain more visibility, right? Because when you do a presentation, there's probably 10 people who show up and maybe not all of them supervise you. So it's a good way to make a good impression. Um, so phase B, as you know, is the main event and you must make it count. Now, during the internship, these are the do's and don'ts. So the do's are embrace your assignment, no matter how mundane, you know, show that you just love, um, love your job, right? I mean, the kind of attitude that I'm trying to like, uh, project over here is if 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 and this will be a talking proverbial sense, okay? Like really, as a 
example analogy. If you if they were to ask you to sweep the floors, show the attitude where you're sweeping the floor with a smile on your face, with respect for the job, and love for the people whose whose lives you're making better, right? By keeping the floors all clean. So all of these are great things. And that's really what comes must come through is that you are there not just to build experiences for yourself, but also to serve others. And when you show those that trait, you have no idea how important people are going to um, see um, that trait is and how much, how much they'll appreciate uh, having you as a teammate. Uh, work hard, come early, stay late. Then uh, some companies for interns, they restrict the number of hours well, I mean, you know, if they do, then I guess it's somewhat tough luck, right? Um, but sometimes they give you laptops, uh, work laptops to take home, and uh, they wouldn't, they probably don't restrict. So if you have a way, remain engaged. Look, you go in there for an internship, you got to soak out everything, right? Or soak in everything um, uh, that you have over there in terms of experience. And every bit of work you do is going to help you build experience, help you build skills, but also help you make a great impression. Because at the end of the day, it is what you produce, what you deliver that matters. And so that's important for you to know, right? Don't think about work-life balance in the truest sense, like, oh, I can only work eight hours and I, I'm gonna take, you know, kind of partition this thing out to something else. Um, it's okay. I mean, if you're enjoying it, work is fun, just make it count, you know, 15 hours a day. It's fine if they allow you to do that. Focus on experience, be generous in giving credit. That's important. You know, you will come across tons of people in industry who would be so keen to kind of take credit from you, uh, sometimes say things as having done when they weren't the ones who came up with the idea or they weren't the ones who actually did the meat of the work. So um, I'm not saying that there's majority of people like that. No, it's exactly the opposite. Majority of people actually share credit. Um, and so you gotta be the one who's more generous. Uh, there's no substitute for preparation, uh, important, right? Um, be dependable, be curious, be a sponge. That's important. Ask yourself often, would I like to work here? I, look, I mean, I just want to say this one more time. So when you are in the moment, when you are there experiencing the situation, you got to constantly be mindful of asking yourself, would I want to work here? Because once you leave, the memories fade away, right? And so by by consciously asking that question, you're actually critically looking at that company from many different angles, right? And the angles can be some of the criteria set that we talked about earlier. So be in the habit of, of just asking. Now, let me just say a few things about what are the don'ts. So try not to be overbearing or overreacting or starting your sentences with a but, right? So because that kind of showcases that you are always trying to look for the opposite side, uh, try not to be cynical because for most people, the right to be cynical comes with experience and qualification. Uh, try not to overcommit and under deliver. I cannot stress this enough. You know, we are always eager to please. And so in our eagerness, sometimes we can overcommit and then end up disappointing people. Instead, be realistic. Uh, so I'm not saying under commit and over deliver. That's also the wrong thing because that's what people call as padding, right? So try to be somewhere in between, you know, be, be um, optimistic, but not be callous with your commitments, right? And if you do, don't let it come as a surprise. That's important. You know, if you ended up saying, hey, I'll get this thing done by Friday, and if you said that thing on a Monday, then if you realize that you are falling behind, um, if you realize that on Wednesday itself, 
be upfront, let people know that, hey, I'm trending to actually fall behind. And because then you give them the option of finding help, bringing help to you, right? If, if you wait until Friday and saying, hey, I tried, but I missed, then that is putting someone in a bind. So please, please, please do not let it come as a surprise. And try not to come this all the time is try to hoard up a bunch of things and then realize later on that there's bugs in the code or uh, some things were not documented properly and so next person in coming in had no idea uh, what the heck was done right so so the quality is in i mean you'll know and if you're not clear on what quality is for the job you're doing be sure to ask um, so people can advise you about that. Last week at work, reflect on your work, successes, shortcomings, and failures. Write them down while the iron is hot. That's also important. You know, I always had this habit of keeping a journal, and that helped me really be mindful of the moment. And not just that, but then every now and then reflect on that and then take those learnings both positively and also things to avoid uh, for, for the future. If things went well, ask your supervisor to write you a referral on LinkedIn. That's the okay thing to ask because you, they can advertise uh, you know, for you, right? Um, ask your supervisor for advice on courses to take, projects to do when you're back in school. Um, and again, you know, they'll be able to say, well, you know, in this, the kind of things we do, um, software engineering would be important. Um, to take or some people might say for the kind of things we expect you to do if you were to come back I think you should go back and, and take machine learning so so be sure to ask their advice on which courses um, when you come back to school and then you know be sure to say goodbye these are like some things that can sometimes slip um, our attention but try not to let this happen um, uh, let people know who helped you there and who can help you in the future. Let them know that you had a great time and that you are going to hopefully see them again. Now, when you're back on campus, write a note of thanks. Again, this is just being gracious, taking time to let your supervisor know that you appreciated their help while you were there. Let your teammates know that you're back safe and, uh, and that you appreciated all the stuff they did. Uh, try to make it appear personal and heartfelt. Um, show, share a couple examples. So don't just say like, I had a great time, thank you guys. But say, I had a great time learning this, 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 or these are the things that I took away. So th those stuffs are really good, good things to say, right? Because then it comes across as genuine. Volunteer to speak about the company to students who may want to go there. That's just passing it forward, right? So come to Aggie Coding Club or go to Texas A&M Computing Society um, or Cybersecurity um, uh, Club, right? It just talk about what, what you did. Um, you can talk to the career center or your department uh, for hosting. Sometimes, uh, you know, there's a couple of times that I've been able to host some of my students uh, who had internships to actually come and sit on a panel and talk about, uh, about the experiences to my students. And then plan your move for the summer, whether it's for an internship or for a full-time job. Well, I mean, this is all about it. I wish I was there with you in person um, because these things are just fun to talk about when we are live talking to each other and can host a bunch of questions and answers. Um, but, uh, um, for now, this will do, and then, and then if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Um, take care.